Hi everyone, this is Avani from Hedgecraft Heirlooms and I am here today to talk about tea magic. And I'm super excited, it's been a really crazy day, but here I am, I landed here in time and we're gonna make this thing happen. So today is our mad tea party. I got, I put on the most ridiculously extra things I could think of. Hey Elle, welcome to the mad tea party tea magic live stream. I was just saying I put on the most ridiculous thing that I could think of to find. I was going to wear a top hat, actually, that's steampunk. That's my husband's. Uh, but we can't find it, and it's really sad. So I'm wearing this crazy thing instead. I thought that was that was a good compromise. Where's the tattoo? It's on my calf, and uh, I just haven't gotten around to taking a picture of it yet. Um, I would show it to you, but I think it would be really awkward to get my leg up here in frame. So I will take a picture and share it later, I promise. And it's not a new tattoo. It's actually, we finished an old tattoo, old, older tattoo that was never completed um, from before I got pregnant. Actually, it's been a couple years in the making. So, But it's done finally, so yay. Um, and it was kind of an unexpected thing. She had cancellation and she just was like, here, can I throw you in here? And I was like, okay, sure. So I did it kind of last minute. Here today. Here we go. All right. Now that I have it myself more or less squared away, let me come back here. I'm just trying to get myself set up so that when people start arriving, I have everything where I need it. Excellent. Okay. So let me sit back and make myself comfortable and grab some tea because I thought it was important to actually have tea for today. This is my, my newest tea mug I bought for myself, personally. It's like patterned like a teacup, but it's a mug, and I thought that, that was amazing because I never drink out of actual teacups for the most part. I really like to drink out of mugs because um, they're bigger, <laughs> and I like all of the tea. If you're here watching, make sure you throw a hashtag live into the comments, hashtag replay if you're watching on the replay, especially if you're on Facebook because Facebook only shows me a number, not any names, and I want to get to say hello to you. But if you haven't met me before, and you probably have if you're here so far, my name is Avani, and today we're here having a mad tea party slash talking about tea magic. And um, I wanted to start off today while we are our kind of little pre-show, while we wait for folks to show up, I thought that we would talk a little bit. Oh, Elle says, cute, mine is a mug that says there's a chance this is vodka. It's not vodka, though. That's funny. Chelsea says, oh, pretty live. I think you're referring to my really, really extra outfit. So the theme for today is um, tea magic. Oh. Today's theme is tea magic and the mad tea party. So I was I was aiming for mad tea party and I'm wearing my new fur jacket that I thrifted early, early this week. I got this, full, this is full length and it's hooded. I got this at um, the thrift store for $28 this week and then I Googled it after and it turns out it's $400 full retail. So I got a big steal on it and I thought that a fur coat would be perfect. I was gonna wear a top hat, but um, that's missing. We couldn't find it and I ran out of time. So here we are, more tea. All right, so let's talk about our little pre-show here. I want to talk a little bit about Bone China. Uh, some people may have heard Bone China, but not really sure, sure what that means. Hey, Tab Chakra Magic, we're here talking about tea magic today. We're having a mad tea party. That's what my crazy outfit is all about. Um, and uh, so we're talking first a little bit while we wait for folks to show up about Bone tea, Bone, wow, Bone China or Bone Porcelain, people call it. Um, what it is and how it's made um, because it's um, it's really cool. I just, before I even really knew what it was, I was like, ooh, Bone, it has Bone in the word. Like, how cool is that? Um, so... That's why I want to talk about it, because I thought other people might think the same thing. And I just realized that this is like falling down. It's like attacking my forehead in not the right places. Ugh. I don't know if that actually made a difference, but oh well. We're going to just ignore it for now. So, Bow and China. Let's chat about it. Again, if you're here watching on Facebook or Instagram, if you want to throw a hashtag live into a comment, that'd be great. It helps the algorithm reach out, find other people who might want to watch. Hey, Liz on Facebook. Glad that you made it. You can see, I'm sure you'll appreciate this amazing fur coat that I found. I actually kind of thought of you and I got it. It seemed like precisely the type of extra thing that you'd get really excited about, but I digress. So let's talk about Bone China. Um, so, Bone China is actually, it's approximately equal parts, um, Kaolin clay, a specific type of clay, cornerstone, which is a variety of feldspar, um, moonstone, and labradorite are also, and actually sunstone are also varieties of feldspar, just for, you know, your reference sake, if you're familiar with those. Um, and finally, perhaps most importantly, bone ash. 
the powder foam of bone ash. Hey Plants Breathe, we're here having a mad tea party today. We're talking about tea magic. Mm. I have lavender mint cup of calm tea today. Um, I had some other tea earlier this morning, but I thought for today, because I have a crazy evening ahead of me, because we have this at four o'clock, and then at six o'clock, shortly after this, I have a mad tea party shop update happening. Hey, Karen, glad you're here. Karen just sent me a private message. I literally just sent a teacup to her house, so it's a tea, a tea full, tea full? We're going to go with that. A tea full kind of day. So, up until... Um, I can't, I didn't write the year on here, but the only company in America specifically that ever manufactured bone china was a company called Lennox. Um, and interestingly, I have a couple pieces that are going to be in my curated sale later that are made by Lennox. Um, uh, my, one of my favorites is one of them here, so this is made by Lennox. Um, I'll show you that more later, I promise. But yes, there is a live sale, so if you're watching and you want to get in on that, make sure you stay tuned because that's going to be at the end. Um, but the bone that they use to make the bone ash comes from low iron content cattle bones. Um, I tried really hard actually to figure out where they're sourcing those bones from um, and I came up empty but I can only assume it's coming from the beef industry or the dairy industry um, just because you know there's waste at some point and they have to do something with it you might as well sell it somebody who's going to use it that's kind of the way capitalism seems to work. Um, this thing. So usually bone china is usually between 25 and 40 percent bone ash. Liz down here says she loves my fur coat. Ah, yes. Um, so the bones are crushed before being gelat de gelatinized, which doesn't that sound absolutely disgusting? I'm just gonna wave at some of these people on Instagram. Um, de gelatinized and then calcined at up to um, 1250 degrees Celsius to produce the bone ash. So interestingly, um, I, I, I actually had heard the term calcine before doing this research, um, and calcination is actually one of the seven steps of alchemical transformation. Cool story, look it up. Um, so, but the higher the content of the bone ash in the china, the higher the quality of it. Um, the standard in the U.S. for bone china is only about 25%. Hey, Wild Green Child, we're here talking about tea magic today. We're having a, a mad tea party, which is why I have this crazy outfit on. And yes, every time I say that, I'm absolutely going to take a sip of tea, so I hope you guys are prepared for that. Mm. So, um, so the re oh, so 25% bone ash for it to be because we're bone china in the United States, and we actually have the lowest standard. Um, and then in the UK, it has to be 30% to be considered bone china, and then 36% in um, China, China, to be bone china. <laughs> Um, oh, it looks so cute. Thank you. My crazy outfit today. Um, so that's actually one of the reasons why China in particular has is called China because it's it's primarily from there and it has the best reputation um, for quality um, when it comes from China because they use a higher percentage. Um, so the reason why bone China is considered to be so, so good is because it produces porcelain that's whiter, lighter, lighter weight, excuse me, whiter lighter weight. It has a little bit of a translucency to it so you can like shine light through it. Um, and it's stronger and actually more chip resistant, which is why it's considered to be such a good thing. Wild Green John says, do, do you know what kind of cattle, what bones you use? Yes, I, I just totally just gave the answer away. I, I mentioned it just a few moments before you um, answered. It's cattle bones, usually low iron content. And I assume, I couldn't find it specifically, but I can only assume that it comes from um, bone that is like leftover byproduct from like the beef and dairy industry, which is kind of unfortunate if you're like a vegan vegetarian. But um, that's where it comes from, I'm thinking. Not 100%, just guessing, because generally that's how those industries work. Whatever they have left over, they sell to someone else, and that's part of how they make their money. Um, but anyway, that said, so in order for it to be for bone china to harden completely, um, it has to be fired at least twice, sometimes up to five times for decorative pieces um, like this. I actually don't think that this is bone china. I actually think this is a relatively new piece, although it is made in China. But it does also say, oh, it does say not micro. I think this is actually a relatively modern piece. Um, but I thought it was pretty, so I bought it anyway. But probably no bone ash in here, so there's that. Um, but bone china is considered, interestingly, to be one of the most food safe materials because it actually leaches trace amounts of calcium into the food that's served in it and on it. 
Um, hey Casey, thank you for the little hashtag live. Glad to have you. Um, and I didn't say thanks to Karen. Thanks to Karen too. I'm glad there's so many people here. People are really clamoring for tea magic. I'm super stoked that there's so many folks watching us today. Hmm. So, uh, but there is such a thing as new bone china, which is not bone china. It is not the same thing. So if it says new, it does not have bone ash in it, which for some people might be a bonus if you don't like the idea of it. Um, it does contain calcium oxide, but it does not have actual bone ash in it. Um, if you have bone china pieces, always be sure to hand wash for longevity. Um, Karen, is that teacup I brought you got today made out of bone china? I don't know. I didn't even need to look at the bottom. I was just reading the name of the company that made it. So that'd be interesting and interesting to find out. Um, so this piece here, interesting, I'll show you before we go on. This piece I have here, this will be in the pre-sale, is actually made of bone china. I don't know how you can see there is a little bit of translucency to it. It is very white. Um, it actually says right on the bottom here, bone china. The pieces that are, are bone china are usually labeled as such because it's absolutely a selling point. So I don't think anyone's ever going to actually, um, we want all the tea stuff they say, and then someone else said all of the tea, and then Plantsburg says they want to eventually purchase item. Excellent. Um, that's kind of the goal. That's the hope here that, that me sitting here and being crazy will make you want to <laughs> order things from me because that's what I do it for. I'm getting them for you guys. It's not for me. I mean, let's be honest. I like getting it, but it's for you guys. Karen says that um, it is bone china by a company called Royal Adderley, which I believe is English. I think it was made in England. Um, I'm guessing. So let me have another sip of tea and then we are really, really going to get into tea magic. So hold on to your mad hats here. Mm. Okay. Let me see if I can put this closer to me so I don't have to keep leaning all the way forward. Let me scooch some of my things here. Excellent. All right. This jacket is really warm. So um, th this is a, that's a cool shape. I assume you mean this, my tea mug. Yes, I was saying earlier, you maybe you weren't quite, hadn't made it yet. I found this. I thrifted this earlier this week. Um, it's actually, it's a, it looks like the pattern of a teacup, but it's the shape of a mug. And I love that about it because I like when I drink tea, I want to have a lot of tea not just a little tea, like it comes in a legit teacup. Mm. So let's get to tea magic. Yay, tea magic. That's what you came here for. So I have this little quote I wanted to start with. It says, when tea becomes ritual, it takes its place at the heart of our ability to see greatness in small things. Um, and that's by um, a woman named Muriel Barbary, who is a New York Times bestselling author. And I just love that quote. I was looking for a really good kind of um, segue into tea magic. And that just really hit me, hit me in the feels. And I was like, oh, man, that is the perfect quote. That's exactly the sentiment that I want to kind of convey here is the magic of tea. Um, you know, so tea, by definition, in case anybody here for some reason has doesn't know this thing, um, is a hot drink made by infusing dried slash crushed leaves of the tea plant in boiling water. So tea, um, like black tea is what they're assuming. Pretty much we refer to any leaf, <laughs> hot leaf water as um, as tea, but originally it was referring specifically to the type that was made from the tea plant. But of course, other things apply. Um, tea is often, although not always, as you're seeing here, consumed as a breakfast beverage, especially in the US, um, alongside coffee. Of course, in other, other places like China, like England, Tea is consumed at all times of day. Thanks for that. I think that it's an all day long beverage and tea is an excellent addition to any day. Aubrey says, love your hair, hat, hair, and you. Oh, Aubrey, but real quick, I have to point, I have to point out my fur coat because it's also awesome and I got it at a steel thrift store earlier this week. So it's also fabulous, but thank you very much. Um, I was gonna wear a top hat, but I couldn't find it. So this is what we ended up with today. And I thought it was, all the better for a mad tea party because it basically matches nothing else that I'm wearing today and looks absolutely crazy. So I'm glad everybody likes it. Um, I originally bought this for a Miss Peacock clue costume party. <laughs> um, anyway, so one of the things I want to talk about when we talk about tea magic, you know, um, and oh, Michelle says that she has tea all the time. Excellent. Who doesn't? I mean, if, if, if you don't, consider it because tea is excellent at all times of day. Um, but one of the things I talked about with tea, you know, because we're having it all the time, having tea often becomes a routine. And so one of the things I wanted to talk about here was the idea of routine versus ritual. You know, what's the difference between them? And it's actually very, very, very simple. And the, and the difference is this intention. That's it. Karen says tea time in the UK is best. I, I 
a million times believe that. I haven't experienced it personally, but I can only assume it is excellent. Um, so when you intend, so you know, when you make tea to to have along with a meal or whatever, and you're just drinking it, and that's what you normally do, it's it's a it's a it's a routine. Hey, floriculture, mm, culture, I, hi, I'm glad you're here. I'm, I don't want to butcher your name, but I'm thrilled you made it. I'm going to call you Flora, Flor, Floriculture, something like that. Flor, I like Flora. That's actually the name of a goddess, so Flora is very lovely. So, um, basically, you know, the, the second that you take the time to intentionally put together your tea at a time of day or with particular materials toward an intention, it becomes ritual just by thinking it so. The power of thinking is 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 wonderful. Um, so, and really that's the only key here to turning your everyday tea into magical tea, to really oversimplify it. As soon as you say to yourself, okay, this tea is a spell, this tea is is a ritual, it is which is pretty cool. It's that, that simple in a way. And tea can be simple, which is one of the things that I think makes it so wonderful. For magic in particular, because so many of us lead such busy lives, sometimes it can be hard to squeeze it in. Um, so if you, if you are familiar with making tea, this may or may not be helpful to you, but I want to talk about it anyway, um, mostly because I really want to plug um, this particular device that we use. Um, so there's two different there's different types of tea, teapots. There's regular teapots, which are what most people are using. There's also electric teapots. We have here in my house. I, my I I I married this teapot effectively. It was my husband's, so it came into the house and we got married. But it's an electric teapot. You, it's like I I looked it up when I was researching for this live. But there's something crazy like four hundred dollars retail now. He didn't pay quite that much when he bought it because he bought it years ago. But there. And there are less expensive models you can get, but an electric teapot is kind of like amazing, especially the, the nicer models because you can set them to a specific temperature for different types of tea. Um, I didn't put the, the exacts in here um, because you can find it all online and I didn't want to get into those, those details while we were sitting here talking about tea magic to talk about the mundane, mon, mundanity, I think that's how you pronounce that, of tea, but you can find that on the internet. Um, but it's really great because you can set the temperature and you fill the pitcher, you put it on the thing and hit start and it will just make you hot water the temperature you want and it's like the easiest thing in the world. Obviously it beeps at you when it's done, it beeps at you when it's done like a microwave. It is wonderful. 10 out of 10. Highly recommend if you don't have one and you love tea, definitely think about getting one. They're worth it. So when you're making tea, you should always start with cold water. A little bit more mundane stuff and then we'll get to the magic stuff. Um, you should not ever use boiling water. You want it to get close to boiling, but not quite, basically. Um, most tea, you, you brew somewhere between like 140 and like 190, maybe 200 degrees. Um, and boiling is 212, if you're not sure. Um, again, I had to double check that myself because I didn't remember. Um, so, yeah, so... Yeah, so I was just reading here. I'm repeating myself in writing what I was just telling you about setting the temperature. Setting the temperature, super cool. Um, you should always consider using filtered water, especially if you have really hard water, because the hard water can actually interact with the tannins in the tea, um, causing staining or film forming on your mugs, which is which it would be terrible. Um, and I know that I have hard water here, and I super never use filtered water. But um, actually, we, our water is technically filtered. We have one of those hard water um, like systems in the house, but I just know that it doesn't do a hundred percent job. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Again, if you're here watching and you haven't done it already for some reason, please throw a hashtag live in the comments so I can say hello. Um, I just want to know who's here so I can, you know, give you the little bit of attention that you deserve for being kind enough to show up and be a gracious host for our mad tea party today. So that said, now that we've talked about some of the kind of simple, silly things about making tea, let's talk a little bit about the type of tea. So uh, oftentimes when I wake up in the morning, um, when, I, when I'm choosing a type of tea, it's based on my intention for the day. Um, so one of the things that I kind of pulled together for you guys real quick, like Karen says microwave tea shutters. Yeah, that's awful because there's really no way to control the water. I do not recommend doing it that way. When I, before, before I had access to the electric teapot, I will admit that I totally did that because um, I didn't have a teapot and I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, but it's way better this way. Do not do that. Learn learn from my experience. Do not microwave water to make tea. It's a terrible idea. So 
in your day to day when you are trying to decide what kind of tea is best for the day. Um, I kind of pulled together a list here of intentions and common teas that you can use that will help with it. Um, so for me when, well first of all this is one of my favorite types of tea anyway. Hey Rise Resin Works, we're here talking about tea magic today. We're having a mad tea party which is why I have this crazy outfit on today. Um, Alan says here that she loves her electric teapot. It's not fancy and it was cheap but it heats water like a champ. Heck yeah! My, uh, my in-laws have a cheaper model at their cottage up in Maine and even though it's not quite the same, it's not as fancy as the one we have here, it's still excellent. Any electric teapot is better than no electric teapot. Just saying. Um, so one of my favorite types of tea and part of why I like to use it all, on a regular basis um, is cinnamon tea or clove tea and cinnamon can be really really great for productivity. It also be good for protection. I don't think I even put protection on here, but protection is a really big thing for cinnamon as well. Um, another type of tea that you might want to use if you're looking for productivity is black tea. Of course, black tea is frequently caffeinated, so you know that kind of makes sense. Um, if you're looking to de-stress, which this is cup of calm, um, so some of the things that are in here are on here. So lavender, this is lavender mint, um, chamomile, which is known to be relaxing. Um, and green tea are both ex are all excellent for calming and de-stressing and relaxing if that's your goal. Hmm. Um, if you're looking to bring in abundance or luck, um, mint, cinnamon, or chamomile can be excellent choices. Um, if you're looking for something a little more sensual, oh, Rue Wise Resin Works says she loves, they love tea, I shouldn't assume she, they love tea, have more herbs for tea than anything else. Um, and Tab, Tab Chakra Magic asks, how many cloves do you use for one cup? That's a great question. Um, I don't know. I, I do very, very rarely use loose tea myself. I tend to use bags. Um, when I wrote this list, I was kind of doing it. Oh, thank you, Lene, says I look fabulous. This is my crazy mad tea party outfit today. Um, what about green tea? Oh, I'm getting there. I think green tea is on here. Oh, I, green tea I said was good for de-stressing and relaxing. Um... And the clove thing, I usually use bags. I don't really, I sometimes buy loose leaf tea, but I rarely use it. Um, but that's a really great custom. Let's see, you know what, let's Google it real quick. I have I have the internet right next to me here. So let's see. How to make loose clove tea. Let's see what the Google says. Homemade chai, so I guess clove is one of the main things in um, clover. How to make your own clove tea. Um, grind one tablespoon of whole cloves. Um, I don't know how much that makes. Let's see. Let me open this up and see it better for you. It says here, clove is good for weight loss, immunity, and diabetes management. Obviously, they're not talking about the magic here. They're talking about health benefits, clearly. Um, let's see. Regulates blood sugar levels. I'm trying to see how much this makes. It says one tablespoon to a cup of water. So that's for a cup of tea. So about a tablespoon of ground up whole cloves to answer your question. Yay, internet. Um, so back to our other intentions here. Oh, hey, Kelly. You made it here for a mad tea party. We're talking about tea magic today. Oh, Chow Chakra says they're hard to grind. They are hard to grind. Um, I know that you certain I know I can buy loose tea and get a tea ball. I actually have those. I just never use them. I'm sorry. Um, uh, they're hard to grind. Um, if you have a coffee grinder, a coffee grinder will do it. Um, I have one of those too. Those are great or from if you're grinding up herbs of any kind of variety. Um, if you're really lazy and you don't want to do that, you can actually buy ground cloves at the grocery store already. Um, Karen says one tea teaspoon per cup plus one for the pot. For loose tea leaves. Okay. Um, Kelly says she loves tea. Everybody loves tea. Everybody's happy to be here today. I think it's the weather. Everyone's thrilled. Well, where I am at least, it's one of the warmest days we've had this year so far. But um, everybody's in a good mood and glad to be here talking about tea. And I'm glad to have you guys here. So yay. Um, so back to our intentions here. So I was talking about abundance of luck uh, using mint, cinnamon, and chamomile. If you're looking for something a little more sensual or for attracting a partner, or just attracting a little fun. Um, hibiscus, rose hip, rose or jasmine can be quite lovely. Um, if you're looking to increase psychic ability or intuition, like if you're doing it at nighttime before going to bed to get have psychic dreams, or if you're doing it before doing it some tarot reading or in a ritual. Um, oh, Wild Green Child says you can just put the whole cloves in the pot too. Hey, thanks for the tip, guys. This is great. So there you go. You don't have to grind them at all. Problem solved. Um, obviously you're going to have to probably do a pretty, like if you're doing a tablespoon, you're going to have to do like a heaping tablespoon just to make up for the extra airspace um, from the cloves not kind of being able to sit right next to each other, I would say. 
Um, so for psychic power, you want to do mugwort. Now I, I put a little asterisk next to mugwort for myself because mugwort isn't exactly an easy to find tea. Um, but mugwort is just so closely associated with intuition and psychic ability that I had to put it on the list. Hey, hey, woman, we're here talking about tea magic today. We're having a little bit of a mad tea party, which is why I have this crazy outfit on. We're just talking about different teas that you can make from day to day for different intentions, depending on what you're planning to do that day. Um, if you're looking for something that's a road opening, which is how I phrased it, but basically for tea that you can use with your intention to sort of remove obstacles throughout your day. You know, let's say that you have a really tough meeting to get through in an interview and you're like, man, I really want to get through this on the other side, um, better for it. That's what road opening kind of is. And some things that are good for that are mint and lavender, which is what the type of tea is that I'm having today. Um, not for road opening, just because the, the calming. Um, lemon balm is another, which is, isn't necessarily easy to come by either, but again, lemon balm is just so well known and so usually easy to find otherwise that I figured it was worth including. And then of course, rose hips again. Kelly says she just ordered some awesome cold brew green tea, which again, green tea is good for relaxing. I would say also for abundance um, too. I only did like three, two to three per thing here because you know, I only had a little bit of space on this table, but I would say for abundance also. But that has amazing flavors and so far she's doing with the blackberry. Blackberry green tea? Hmm. That sounds yummy. This is actually starting to get tepid. I thought for sure this was gonna be like piping hot the whole time over here. Um, however, for those people who are here drinking tea, a lot of us also drink coffee too. I actually don't drink coffee. I'm like one of the only people in the world that thinks coffee is like disgusting. But a lot of you probably drink it. So I thought that I would kind of just throw a little bit about that in here just so, you know, we're not leaving it out. You know, coffee, if you're looking for what the good intentions, you know, intentions for coffee drinking might be if you're, drink, you know, brewing yourself a cup of coffee in the morning and trying to figure out what intention you can put into it based on, you know, coffee in general. Coffee is considered road opening. It's supposed to be good for productivity. Again, makes sense. There's caffeine in it. Um, we're talking about magically and obviously, you know, mundanely. So a little bit of both. Uh, the more you dig into magic and the occult, the more you find that there is a lot of crossover. Like a lot of the reasons why things have gotten the magical properties that they do is because of the mundane properties of them. So, you know, it's sort of like six of one half dozen of the other. Um, it's also considered to be great for sensuality um, and great for luck. All right, people are talking here on Facebook. Chelsea says she's been living on lavender rose tip um, and then lavender and Rehoboth blood. I've never had that. I used to be, there were um, some, some years, some, like there was a couple years ago where I was like obsessed with Rehoboth tea and I haven't had it in like forever. But lavender rose sounds really interesting and very earthy and lovely and I would be very interested in trying that. It's, is that a brand that you bought or is that loose leaf? I would be, I would be very interested in hearing where you got that because I might really like to enjoy that. Oh, and also she says here with dried blueberry. Um, and then, of course, Wild Green um, Child is, um, oh, excuse me, Tab Chakra Magic is saying thank you to Wild Green Child for that clove tip. So, yes, thank you again. Um, obviously, as you can see, I'm not the be all and all of tea knowledge, so I'm thrilled to have all of your input as well. Um, Tab Chakra Magic also says um, butterfly pea flower. I don't know what that means, but I would love to know. Please do expand on that because I'm intrigued. <laughs> So in addition to the actual type of tea that you're making, another thing that you can do to kind of infuse it with magic on your day-to-day -day mag day -day life. Oh, Chelsea says it's loose leaf tea from Amazon. I'll send the brand on my doors. Excellent. If this is still going, you can put it in the, in the comments because other people might like it too. If not, actually you can add it to the comments either way because on Facebook this will just get um, put into the group um, at large um, so people can see it. Or of course you can DPM it to me, but either way I'll probably post it in the comments so other people can find it. And Michelle says, yes, please tell us more about the butterfly pea flower. We want to know very much what that means. Um, so like I was saying, other than the herbs that sell themselves that you're using, of course the other thing that you can do to make your tea that much more magical is to trace a sigil or magic symbols or runes over the tea as it's brewing before you drink it to put the intention of that in it as well. Um, and just kind of a little short list of some that you might like to use. Um, and of course I didn't bring my runes in here, so, um, like, do I have a pen? I'm just gonna have to trace it in the air and you guys are gonna have to Google it. I'm sorry. I, I do have it on my paper here. So here, let me just do this. So the first one I wanted to say is that you could do is one called Algies. Oh, let's see. Tab Chakra says that the butterfly pea flower is a blue tea that turns blue in water and purple when you add lemon. That is super cool. Does it taste good? I would love to know what it tastes like. Um, so the first one I was going to say is Algiz, which is actually a protection rune, and it's sort of shaped like a Y, but a line up the middle, so it actually looks sort of like a person doing this, 
and the, except the head would be a line that goes all the way up. So it's a Y with a line down the middle. It looks like, oh, I don't know if that's gonna focus that little symbol above my index finger. Well, it's there. Uh, pink and purple woody flavor. Ooh, that sounds interesting. I like woody flavors. I know that my, my mother-in-law, Liz, she loves woody flavored stuff too. Um, so that's interesting. Another symbol, obviously, that's good for protection is a pentacle or a pentagram. I think we all know how to make one of those. Super simple, super easy. E even something as simple as an equal arm cross, which is uh, also a good way to, you can do, that's also a protection or a solar symbol. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about what direction you're, you know, what corner of the pentagram you're tracing it in, if that's not your, your strong point, like me. Um, another one that you might like to do is ruse, which is another rune, um, and it's shaped like... I'm going to see. I'm, I'm not sure if you guys are seeing it reversed or not. Usually the higher side is on the left side if you're looking at a piece of paper. So it goes like this. And it actually means the oryx, which is a type of cattle or ox, ox type animal. Um, and this is just me. Not everybody associates it this way, but I also often associate um, urus with perseverance. So if you're looking for something to help get you through the day, because you know it's going to be a tough one, that can be great too. Um, and Michelle says, thanks for the tip on the butterfly pea flower. She's going to have to try that. Me too. I hope I remember all these things after. Because i, I got to find the Rehoboth lavender. i got to find the butterfly pea flower. I have so many things to look up after. <laughs> um, another rune that you might like to use is one called Anstus, which is good for divine guidance. So it is, it's facing the same direction as a, like if you were drawing an F. Um, but it, but the, the two um, arms on it, they kind of point down a little bit. So... And Seuss. Um, it tends to represent the Aesir in the Norse pantheon, so um, divine guidance. Um, another one is Elhaz, which can be divine inspiration, and it is shaped um, like this. And it actually sort of represents the world tree, the idea of being connected at the top and the bottom and receiving information from both, so divine inspiration. And then finally, I also felt like I needed to include this one, would be Tear, which is shaped like an arrow. And it represents justice and karma. Um, so, you know, if you're working at an office and you've got, you know, someone that works with you that is just the pits and you're tired of their crap, <laughs> you could throw that in your to your coffee and see if that helps them, you know, get theirs and figure themselves out so they're not such a difficult person to be around. But that said, that's all I have for my Mad Tea Party stuff for my educational content. Um, I do, of course, have my live sale and I do always offer... Um, six um, one card free tarot readings for the first people that claim them at the very end. But before I do that, because I will be uploading this Instagram video to my YouTube later, um, and I, I'm gonna cut out all the stuff after, so I'm gonna do a real quick sign off. So if you're here watching on YouTube, we're so glad you have case. We're so glad you stayed with us for this mad tea party, uh, as evidenced by my inability to speak. But thank you for, for being here. We hope that this helped, um, you know, improve your personal spiritual practice, so you could use your already existing tea drinking habit to bring extra magic to your day to day life. So thanks for being here, and blessed be. All right, are you still here? <laughs>